have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. You don't need a TV. Hello and welcome to TV Guidance Counselor. I am Ken Reed, your TV Guidance Counselor, and I am very excited about this episode. If you are checking out the show for the first time because of my guests, welcome to you. Uh, the premise of this show generally is that uh, somebody picks a random TV guide from my collection of TV guides, which if you're from the UK is a bit like uh, Radio Times or TV Times, uh, and we usually talk about a specific week of television from the past that is sort of the normal format of the show. Occasionally, we do break format, and I talk to people who have worked in the television industry or uh, just people that I think are very interesting, and uh, we just kind of generally talk about things they watched growing up or television and their impact on their lives and that sort of thing. Uh, and that's kind of what we do today with my guests, Captain Sensible and Dave Vanian from The Damned. Uh, the Damned are one of my all-time favorite bands. I've said it on the show before if you're a regular listener, but seeing The Damned perform on The Young Ones was sort of life-changing for me. And, and one of the major, major reasons I got into punk rock and I uh, was in a punk rock band when I was a teenager and, and kind of actually went into comedy and, and all those sorts of things. So I'm a stand-up comedian from Boston, Massachusetts, and The Damned came through town recently and I was able to grab a bit of their time to discuss sort of television and what they watch and what they don't watch in some cases. And it was a great conversation and I cannot thank the guys enough for, for taking the time to talk to me. So first up is Captain Sensible, the longtime guitar player for The Damned and uh solo artist as well, uh, the, the writer-performer of one of my favorite Christmas songs of all time, One Christmas Catalog. And when I first asked him about doing the show, he instantly said, no, he hates television. And then I said, well, that might be kind of an interesting angle. Why does he hate television? So we chatted very briefly to get his views on why he hates television. So first up, here is Captain Sensible from The Damned. Hello. Hello, it's Captain Bird's Eye. Captain, yes. sorry, Captain Sensible. You don't have Captain Bird's Eye over it. We did though for a brief yeah. time. Yeah, my wife's also British, so she's schooled me on the uh, on the ways of England. Right, let's go. Um, yeah. So thank you so much for taking the time. Yeah. Uh, when I first talked to you about uh, talking about television, you said you, you, you hated television yeah. and film. Uh, but then I, I, I have to call you out a little bit. You did reference Monty Python tonight on stage. So hmm. did you watch that growing up? Yes, I th for me, um, Monty Python uh, was was a program that treated the audience with intelligence, right? Um, and uh, it was kind of radical and revolutionary, and uh, it made you think. Uh, like art should make you think, absolutely. You know, otherwise, why does it exist? And uh, I think t too much TV nowadays. It kind of a. Uh, it's kind of brainwashing the comfort of your own living room. Oh, absolutely. Um, not not only that is I just don't get it either. You know, it's kind of you, you life is not too for you. <laughs> life is too short to waste your, to waste sitting in front of that bloody insidious thing in the corner of the room for like three or four or five hours an, an evening. You know, and I know people are exhausted when they come back from work, but really. They should make, they should make their own entertainment. They should that you know watching sitcoms and comedy and all this sort of stuff. I just don't get it. But do you think it could change? Do you think? I mean, uh, to me, the the way I sort of discovered the damn growing up was when I saw you guys in the Young Ones, and that was sort of life changing for me. Being here in America, we didn't get bands like the Damned on television or on the radio, and I, and so in some ways, it really can be good. I mean, I know you've done a lot of TV in the UK. Like we haven't done a lot of TV at all. But you did. We've solo, hardly right? done. We've hardly done any TV. There's not. There's there's no um, support at all for the damn. And it's not bitter, sour grapes, or anything <laughs> like that. I know it may sound like it, but um, it's mutual. I don't like TV, and TV doesn't like us. Right. But you've so, done Ferguson here a bunch. Did you know him when he a couple? We times, did. Like, we did a show with uh, Craig Ferguson because he was a, a damn fan. Right. But uh, can you imagine backstage uh, or in his production room saying, "Yeah, I'd like the damn to do it." You know. <laughs> After who the, who the fuck are those guys? Right. They mean fuck all over here you know why don't we get some big act you know that everybody knows now Craig Ferguson must have really 
uh, put his foot down and said, right. I really well, want the charge. Down. I mean, and, and I think it exposed you guys to a lot of people who watched that show that probably loved seeing it. You know, much in the way that when I saw The Young Ones in 85, 86, I said, what is that? I have to seek this out and find this. <laughs> and, you know, with, with, and my wife actually grew up in Stafford, and she, she said, you know, one of her happiest childhood memories is sitting and watching with her mother watching you do Happy Talk on Top of the Pops. And so, you know, I think that you, you do, even if it's small things on there, you don't realize sort of the impact that it has. I remember seeing, you know, footage of you on Through the keyhole and that sort of stuff on morning television so you know it does have some place but I can see how you could feel like it was a waste of time do, do you wish people just did just listen to music or read books or is there a way that you think art could make its way back into television it's more than that for me TV is um, you know when I said brainwash it, it, it really is you, you when I stopped watching TV, uh, when, when we had our kids, and the kids were going to school and uh, coming back, they wanted, you know, they wanted to watch this and that program, and like, right. and uh, then they were watching the advertisements. They wanted this product and that product. They wanted to go to McDonald's. They uh, wanted to. Uh, so it's like they the wanted this to, program. Yeah, it is, and uh, I threw the television out. And uh, they grew up completely television free. Gotcha. And they're all like sort of in, independent, free thinking, kind right. of um, smart kids. Well, so not that kids was anymore. The they up that was seeing it, the effect that's, it had on your kids. Yes. That's what it was. And it helped me out as well. I didn't realize how, how um, it, it would take the cotton wool away from my eyes. And, right. uh, and I see a different world now. Right. And I really recommend it to anyone to get rid of their TVs because. Uh, You'd be surprised. Do you use a lot of the? Do you use the internet and that stuff frequently though? Because I think that stuff sort of melding into one thing. You know, you, the TV isn't just a TV anymore. It's your computer and your oh, computer. Yes. I do. TV. I do use the internet and I read newspapers and stuff. But you have to, you have to work out for yourself where the truth is. Right. Because there's bo there's the bullshit in there's bullshit in every uh, medium. Absolutely. There's you know, there's plenty of bullshit in the internet, but I can guarantee you know, there's plenty, <laughs> there's plenty of, there's plenty of bullshit in Rupert Murdoch's publications and TV channels. Oh, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. So, so if, you, if not 99 percent. Yeah. Oh no, that's pretty much true. <laughs> when you guys first came over to the states, I think you, you were the first punk band to tour the U.S. And was all the thoughts you had about the U.S. stuff you learned from films and TV growing up, that what, what you guys would get in the U.K.? So how did it measure up to the way you thought it would be based on what um, you saw? Well, I, <laughs> <laughs> to be quite honest, I mean, there is, uh, I just thought Americans were swaggering uh, kind of big-headed buffoons, Not you know? incorrect. Because, uh, <laughs> you know, hey, everything's bigger. Yeah. Right. We're in Texas, I tell you, man. Uh, this, you know. And, We're and number one. Of, yeah, I mean, I just thought, well, I, I just couldn't be asked. And we went over to play in New York um, in 77 or whatever, whenever it was. And, you know, I think we should, you know, I think part of the impact that we had was that we we had no respect whatsoever. Right. So you didn't, and we you didn't, didn't care. We didn't. No, just didn't care. Why should we? Right. You know, because America's got lots more, got more missiles, and you know, the almighty dollar, and they got Hollywood and stuff like that. We just didn't give a shit. Their right. beer, their beer was rubbish. Right. American beer was absolute fucking shit. And now it's. It's completely changed. I have to say that America is now the cutting edge of brewing technology and <laughs> right. it, and innovation. But so it's, it's it's a real joy to go to a pub in America now. But there's no, you know, just just because um, you know you got the, the the film industry over here and right. everything. It doesn't. And we just, we benefited from World War Two instead of being devastated by it like the UK was. Yeah, but we you like, know, like, but, we got a lot of money from this. But if it wasn't for the Russians, we wouldn't have won that war. That's true. That's very true. Although I always despite say, what Hollywood tells oh, us, oh, absolutely, my, it's my Russia theory, that won that war for the for, for the Allies. My theory is everyone forgets Italy was part of the Axis, but it's because they really like their cuisine. Yeah. <laughs> People don't like Russian food. They don't like German no. food. They get all the all the bad stuff. From could, that. Yeah. But a lot of people enjoy sushi now, so they're they're okay with that. Yeah, so, but. The thing is, my wife's Japanese. The thing is, you go to a, a sushi restaurant and nearly all of them are run by Chinese or Koreans. Yes, and people don't care. And people don't know. Right. 
that's the thing. People don't know that uh, it's not Japanese people because they can't tell the difference between right. Asian countries but the, the way their faces look but I, I can because my wife's taught me and sometimes we go we walk into a Japanese restaurant and she walks straight out again shouting it's not Japanese <laughs> right. it's bloody Chinese right. it's, it's a lie you, know, you frauds yeah. yeah I mean in some ways because of tech, things like television and technology the world is smaller but just smaller enough that people go oh I love sushi but I don't mm. know the difference between different Asian races yeah. which is that's funny you wouldn't go to an Indian restaurant Restaurant run by uh, Italians, yeah, or, or <laughs> Irish. Yeah. yeah, I think I have been to an Indian restaurant run by the Irish before. Yeah. <laughs> That's good. very good. Yeah. Uh, so, when, so when's the last? What's the last show you remember watching? TV. Yeah. Oh no, I still, I still watch. You'll still, still yeah. sneak it every now and then. Yeah, if I go to a hotel or something. Sometimes I do. Um, if I mean, I did. I loved Benny Hill. I thought that was... Um, and that was huge here. Yeah. I think it was the biggest British show that he's, was reported over here. Yeah, I think he was a really nice guy, you know. And it, Did the, you meet the, him? No, no, okay. I didn't. But I just, you can tell, he's, he's, it's all like innocent kind of um, naughtiness. Yeah. But, you know. Like the carry-on movies. It's, yeah, it's yeah, no exactly. getting hurt with this. It's not like a... No. Weird, yeah. So you... So you I, I, I like Benny Hill. I like. I like the Prisoner. Oh, I the thought Prisoner that was really great. good. That 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 opened my eyes. I, Does anyone get angry better than Patrick McGill? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Nobody yells as good as him. Yeah. So you said it opened your eyes. Was that a show that? It, it's a pretty trippy, heavy show for. It is, but he everything that he predicted in that show has come true. That's you true. Know? Um, Big Brother and like sort of you know uh, cameras everywhere and like yeah. sort of double speak war is peace you know defense is a, you know you know what I mean yeah, it's, uh, it's, he's, it's really clever what he's done the the, the brainwashing that oh they, absolutely so uh, Patrick McGill yeah. yeah why do you think I, well there you go who is number yeah, one we'll never know is it Patrick McGill well, still <laughs> no not I mean not in the, I mean yeah. in in uh, in in this day and age, yeah. who is number one? You know, Everyone's you know. vying for it, I think. I wonder why in the UK there were so many more sci-fi and dystopian kind of shows in the 60s and 70s especially, and you know what sort of birth punk as well. Was there sort of a, um, a hopeless, like an intelligent hopelessness is kind of the thing that I would glean from it, you know, being here and, and mm. getting pieces of that. I can't, I can't say, uh, I have no idea. Uh, you have to speak Vanian because he's the man for um, um, sci-fi and yeah. horror and all that stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay, thank cool. you so much. Thank I you very much. And so I did speak with Vanian, and that would be Dave Vanian, the singer of The Damned. It's a little bit loud. We were in the dressing room after a punk rock show while a dance disco was happening in the club after. You will enjoy this part of the conversation with Dave Vanian of The Damned. Young ones comes up all the time. Yes, yeah, yeah. Winslow Peak. Yes, one of my favorite movies. Yeah, yes. I just, I, I've got it on my iPad. Uh, oh, it's great. The new, yeah. uh, the new Blu-ray. And when he put that wig on, he, he looked like beef tonight. He did. He yeah, did. I, no one Bowl got it. Right. I heard you say. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I wanted if anyone would get it. Yeah. Bowlers Hole. Uh, that movie's great. I'm surprised that movie never got like the, the cult <laughs> audience that like Rocky Horror got. It, yeah, it's funny. Some yeah, some films do and some films don't. Yeah. yeah. I mean, usually I like films that totally. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Oh yeah, me too. Yeah. I, I was talking to Cap earlier and, and brought up sci-fi and he shut down immediately. But said you're you're the man to speak to about yeah, that sort of thing. Really um, but uh, the the thing to me, I'm a I'm a stand-up comedian by trade, but I was in punk rock bands for years and years here, which is uh, kind of how I got to this path. But um, seeing you guys play on the Young Ones was oh, yeah. life changing for me here in America. We we didn't see bands like the Damned. That was great. And you weren't played on the radio. Really, really uh, great. Well. Yeah, it was good fun to do. Yeah. Did you ever had you ever seen the show? Because you were in the oh, second yeah. series. Oh yeah, we saw the show. Yeah. And then you, when they asked you, you were just like, oh, we have to do it. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it was perfect, you know. What were things that you watched growing up? What were some of your favorite shows? Uh, okay. Uh, well, American stuff is things. Obviously, obvious ones have been Twilight Zone. Right. But before and things like the Invaders. <laughs> but. Um, there was 
I'm trying to think. Do you want English television? Yeah, yeah, either. Whatever you watch as a kid. I know some of my favorite stuff is some of the Nigel Neal stuff, like Beasts and some of that British stuff that was very, very uh, creepy and terrifying. Yeah, well, the thing is, we had things like the, the, the Quatermass series yes. and stuff like that. But there was there was lots of weird stuff. We used to have a thing called Armchair Theatre, black and white stuff. And there used to be, sometimes you get very odd plays. And that. One of my favourite things when I was a kid was um, the BBC always used to have the, on Christmas Eve the ghost story the ghost story right and there were you know and it would be uh, M.R. James or something right. or the Railway Man or something like right. that and I still love that stuff you know. it was really well done I mean it'd be actors like Denham Elliott or whatever you know right. these, these old English actors that, that are brilliant so, so you were always drawn to sort of horror and, and sci-fi stuff on television as a kid well, when I was when I was very young, I was one of these kids that um, yeah was very quiet, so that I could stay up late when those films were on, like, right. hoping that my mother would fall asleep. Right. You know, so you could flip on a hammer. Yeah, and I turned the sound down. Well, it was actually a lot of the old Universal stuff as well. Oh, okay. The original stuff. Um, yeah, I mean, I loved all the all the the Hammer films. It's funny. It's some of the very early Hammer films, like we're talking the Quiet Mass right. stuff, and the earlier black and white stuff they did. Yes, like, the the more like um, the more like murder and Hitchcock. X, X the Unknown. Oh, X the Unknown. Stuff like yep, that, yep. and um, the sci-fi stuff, and yeah, and and also the, they had some crime caper stuff there yep. before they became Hammer, just doing the horror stuff yes, as there's well. A, there's a great one they made with Peter Cushing. Um, that takes place at Christmas time and it's about a robbery in a bank and I can't think of oh, the yeah, I don't know what that's called but it's uh, very very tense and, and terrifying yeah. and I I've always noticed that the stuff that would, we would get here from England mm. is always sort of uh, uh, dystopian yeah <laughs> it was always sort of darker and even the kids shows like the 70s kids shows we would get would be sort of terrifying they weren't really kids shows no, yeah, no I know no, no. when I was funny enough I was watching some old Doctor Who stuff recently and I was thinking how it really didn't seem like a show for kids yeah you know? it's terrifying yeah. and our stuff here was so whitewashed and, and yeah and yeah sanitized and yeah what, and what do you what do you think the difference there was what do you think that do you think kids in England were smarter or easy yeah, no I, I think it was more the um, the actual shows themselves were just well written you know right. good show they didn't write down and I think you know there wasn't any graphic violence or although a lot of it was you know it's kind of off camera right it's still the atmosphere would be would be so thick that it'd be scary as well right. absolutely although I, I wasn't scared but but um the, the one thing about it is when i when i was a young kid is that um and I'd see the old horror films. So I was always fascinated by the uh, the actual things, like the monster itself. No, no, no. For instance, you know, like Frankenstein, things like that. Right. I wanted to live in the house. I wanted right. the house. So like the Gothic architecture. Yeah, right from the beginning. So right. to me, it was it was not just the the amazing films. It was the fact I, I loved that atmosphere and those the architecture and the whole the whole thing about it. It wasn't just the movie yeah. itself. Did so. you grow up in a very city environment that was very different from that sort of environment? Not really, but I, I didn't live, obviously I wasn't in a big castle, yeah. house or a castle, unfortunately. But, um, no, I just found those things very welcoming, you know. And I, right. it, when I'm, oh, it's really scary. I think, right. yeah, wouldn't it be great Seems to be, nice. you know, in the Baron's house up there. Right, you know. so old things yeah. or gothic things are just, I, it's weird that I think kids just sometimes are just like, wired for that. Like, mm. you just, that's your always are drawn to that sort of thing and like you know when I saw you guys in the young ones I was like yeah that's the thing I like I didn't yeah. know it until this time I mean I think everyone assumed uh, that I always lived in a gothic pile and all this stuff and I, I would love to but I think I must have been I must have died and been you know someone in a past life that was a right. a landowner or something because <laughs> like, I just fall straight into it whenever I'm in that were your parents ever into that stuff did they watch any of that horror with you or you were always waiting for your mom to go to sleep so you you could watch it because if no, she was up no, she'd be like no no I mean it's different I mean my my parents um, they were quite I'd say they were normal but they were uh, 
You know, they weren't. They weren't really. It was a different time, really. Right. You know, it was. There was that that divide between parents and kids existed, right. which it doesn't anymore. You know, right. they were very much the parents. Right. You know. Well, because people have to be had to be adults when they turned eighteen. <laughs> yeah, my, my father was a bit of a, a rebel, though. He was kind of like you know, he was. A, he rode a motorbike and oh, really? he kind of, you know, and he, did, he I, remember, I remember funny enough some kids coming to the front door and running away thinking he was a vampire at one point. Really? He did night shift and he had slick back hair and he had quite wow. prominent fangs. How appropriate. Him. So, yeah. It's a bit like, I, I'm picturing Oliver Reed in the movie The Dam. <laughs> yeah. It was, yeah. <laughs> But, but also I loved all those um, the other thing that happened is with my father when I was way underage right. he said you fancy seeing an X film basically really? horror film so we would go out and sit. I didn't get to spend a lot of time with my father because he worked nice. so much yeah. um, but he took me to a late night show and we saw a I can't, I can't remember exactly what we saw that particular night it was probably a, uh, an old early 60s 60s or late 50s horror film and a, and a, and a sort of psycho bike movie. You know? right, right. Would you get? It, would it mostly be American stuff you would get at that time, or was it? British? That was that was Amicus and uh, okay. and was American stuff too. Yeah. I can't. But what happened was I ended up uh, then going to my cinema on my own right. to see these late night shows. We get a double feature. Right. It'd be on at like half eleven or something. Yeah. Because you got a taste for it. Although I was, well, it wasn't that. It was, I was way underage, but because I was on my own and not trying to get in with a bunch of kids, they just used to let me in. Because you weren't going to cause trouble. It wasn't that. They knew I was, they must have known I was underage, because I'm Christ, I probably looked about 10. Right. Um, I, looked, didn't... I looked 10 when I was 19, you know, <laughs> in the band, so. Right. Um, but because, I, you know, I was on my own, they thought, well, this kid must like this, so they let, let me in. Right. And I got to see great, some great old movies that way that probably I wouldn't have seen. Which is amazing now, because I think that kids, yeah. they have access to everything that's ever been made. Oh, yeah, well, that's the difference But they can't now. stumble on it, though. The, the difference now is that, you know, is that, I mean, it's funny enough, just I just downloaded to watch on the trip tomorrow was one of my, uh, was um, a film that's been colorized, uh, Carnival of Souls, yes. you know, which I love. Kirk Harvey. But it used it's to be those TV those movie. kind of things, you get, as you say, you had to hunt for them, you had to yes. find them, whereas now you just psh, you click it away and it's phone. all there. And, and I'm amazed that it's actually there and it's like they're going on about it. This is the wonderful film colorizing right. before would be an obscure film right. only a few people knew about. And you're like, did I even see that or was yeah. it a weird dream that I had? I mean, it, it's like when years ago, back in the 70s, I wanted to find out some stuff on Vampira, and I right. knew there was this article called 1954 Life magazine. Yep. But I had to go, I was in New Jersey, and I had to go to a library and find this thing on microfilm, right. and then Xerox the copies. You right. know, it was all like so oh, yeah. different. I remember I um, I went down to Providence, and H.P. Lovecraft's original writings are there. Oh, wow. from Rhode Island. Yeah. And I went to Brown University, and they made me put on gloves, and I sat and read his manuscripts while someone sat there with me. Wow. And that was how I read stuff like Reanimate. Well, that's and cool. some of his more obscure stuff because you couldn't just get it. You yeah. had to go to a library. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's you know I think part of it is I'm just jealous that they have access to all these things now. Because it, and because of being in the band, you know, uh, in the early days, especially, right. I used to meet people that had interests. Right. Whereas now it's kind of the, a lot of it's kind of fashionable, if you like. Right. Absolutely. And it's they're I not as passionate about. I miss it. that obscurity of things. Right. You know the fact that you you if you met someone who knew about about something it'd be quite a thing because you knew what they'd gone through to find out right about that. they sort of suffered for that thing yeah, it's kind really of yeah it. a bit yeah. silly but yeah. no, I, it's I, like I, um, what's that over America the Mora uh, Child's Tale oh, yes. Lady Dracula such you know? a creepy I creepy love that movie. film yeah. Yeah. the only film Rainbow we ever made Rainbow Smith isn't it I think uh, no, I think yeah, yeah. yeah. and uh, you know they tried to ban it for years yeah. and, but I remember finding that and nobody knew about it for years and now of course it's all yeah now you can get it on Blu-ray and yeah Beautiful, pristine yeah. print. I did get a completely restored version, yeah. which is nice. Yeah, it's, it's weird that I always have an issue with this where I 
I can't be happy about that. Like, I'm almost angry that it's so easy now. No, it's silly, though, isn't Yeah, it, it is. But yeah. I'll see it like a really nice copy of, a, of Dr. Fives or something. Oh, yeah. And I'll be like, oh, come on. <laughs> well, you know, the horrible thing I heard about Fives is they're going to make uh, another film. And yes. talking about Depp, Johnny Depp being... Yes. And I just don't see him as Anton Fives. No. I could see Jeffrey Rush or something. Yes. You know, playing I that think part. De- for some reason, Johnny Depp always takes me out of the movie because you're like it's Johnny Depp yeah. and he doesn't have that sort of like the great thing with Vincent Price was he, he was so I, sad I think he's capable of it it's just yeah. that when he works at Burton or whatever there's so much comedy and there's so much right. a certain performance yeah. in there right it's, it's, it's too like, stylized what was that film he did with Frank Langella oh um, it was uh, that was kind of panned but I liked yeah. that it was a very old fashioned movie good, right? uh, the, the Ninth Gate yeah The Ninth Gate yes. that was a great film it was Roman Polanski yeah Polanski exactly, yeah. which I love yeah um, and he was very understated in that movie. Yeah, and, and, and in there, he, that's what I mean. He's great potential in that. He's great. Yeah, but I think so. I think it's not so much him. I think it's what people get out of him. Yeah, it's what people want to see right. as well. And it's like let's have that Johnny Depp, you know, yeah. rather than cause it's, you get you get that of all actors. Like for so many years, Jack Nicholson's just been this Jack Nicholson. Right. He's a parody of himself. And then I can't remember what film it was. You know, but there was one film he did with oh, I can't even remember what it is now. I've totally forgotten, but I remember thinking this is a great performance for a change right. because someone said, "Don't be Jack Nicholson, do this." You know? well, there's that amazing uh, story about Michael, uh, what's his name, that did um, Witchfinder General. Oh yeah, uh, and he got this really scary, uh, underplayed Vincent Price performance out of it yeah. because the, the, and I don't know if you've heard this before, so forgive me if you have. But uh, I think the director was like 20 years old, and he kept telling Vincent Price, "Stop it, turn it down. It's way too big." Yeah. And Vincent Price said, uh, I've made over 100 films, and then how many have you made? And he said, two good ones. <laughs> and then Vincent Price dialed it down, and he's really great in that movie. He is great in that best movie, yeah. Um, so did you watch any of the horror stuff in the 90s in the UK, like, um, like the yeah. League of Gentlemen or that sort of stuff that was oh, yeah. sort of ostensibly comedy but very scary? Oh, sometimes? League of Gentlemen is great. Yeah. yeah. It was much better when it was first shown in Britain without the laugh. Right. Because it seemed much much more funny and sinister yeah when I put the laugh track I don't know why they did that it takes you out of it I think yeah. I think if without the laugh track it's probably too intense and scary sometimes That's it's I liked really terrifying it, I did too and of course it started as a radio show right, first, right. right. but yeah they're, they're fantastic yeah. right. and they love um, Blood on Satan's Claw the yeah. Amicus movie which yeah. is uh, yeah. a great scary movie as well is there anything that's currently on that you like that you watch <laughs> The trouble with, with a lot of horror films, I mean, you're not talking about TV, right? if you're talking about TV... Well, be, either, I mean, I... I mean, I, I'm a huge horror fan, and one of the things that bothers me about movies now is that it's all about sort of physical pain. Yeah, I was going to say, most of the films I see now are about torture. Yeah. About torture, and I like to see more interesting things. Right, oh yeah. <laughs> you know. And I don't think that's a bad thing at all. No. And, I, you know, it's like a... And also, there's, there's classic films that were made that were very blood first, but were wonderful, like, you know, obviously things like John Carpenter and stuff. Right, and right. I was always a big John Carpenter fan, so I loved all his films. And I loved the soundtracks he did. Oh, yes. Yeah. You know, and the funny thing is, he said he always wanted to originally make westerns. Right. And if you look at his films, they kind of are westerns. Assault in Precinct 13. Yeah, oh, that's absolutely. Totally yeah. 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 And even Prince of Darkness. And The Thing as well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Although it's, you know. But yeah. We, uh, when I was out in LA doing some shows uh, early in the year, we went to the, the, church, uh, the church from Prince of Darkness. Oh, yeah. It's right in downtown LA, and it looks exactly the same. And it's, uh, it's pretty cool to just be yeah. there. It's such a great movie. Yeah, I, I think that John Carpenter movies, when you watch them now with like a younger, with like a, a kid, they think it's very slow. Yeah, I know. Well, that, it, that's the problem now, is everything is so fast and the cuts are fast right. and you got movies. I actually, you know, I like a, an older style of picture where it takes, right. it's kind of almost, you know, a, a, it takes a fetishistic view of something and it slowly dwells on something. Right. I like that. Which I like the story that gradually unfolds. 
songs as well. Which is you know? really kind of the well, opposite of know, punk rock. Yeah. They're sort of fast and yeah. angry. I, w- I would never put the two together. <laughs> no, no. Uh, it's, it's not as atmospheric, but it's, it's sort of... Yeah, I was thinking of obscure films. Um, one I've always liked, which is... It's the dam. Yes. The dam with, with Oliver Reed. Yes, yeah. where he's in the, the motorcycle game yeah. and it's sort of a dystopian. Yeah. That's a yeah, hammer. It's, it's quite, yeah, and it's quite, it's quite surreal in parts. Yes. You know, it's quite, it's quite moodily shot. Yes. With um, Viveka Lindfors, where she's got all her statues on that, you know, that she's made, those yeah. sculptures. That whole thing, the way they've, they've got the angles, it's very... It's, it's very unsettling. Really, Something yeah. about it, it just, it, it's, it's almost uncanny. Like, it feels like a world you're used to. But it's just slightly. Yeah, they, they were good at. You know, that's what I like about those films. They could get that in there without it being a graphic sort of thing. It was just right. a it's not close of unease. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. yeah like, I don't know if sometimes it's also the. Um, the low budget and the black and whiteness of those They're films. They're forced to do it, that. You know, because I used to think um, things like. Uh, I remember seeing. Probably the Twilight Zone or no, no, the Twilight Zone. And I remember it, some episodes that were just so simple. Yeah. You know, one was just in a black room. Yeah. And these odd people, odd mix of people trying to work out why they were there and how to get out. Yeah. And then we're just in this huge bucket, basically. And that's yeah. all it was. But it was brilliant. Yeah. But you get these great actors with great performances. But it's hard to do that. I think that's why we see it less. You have to write something really good for it to work that way. Yeah, well, that's that, I think. Is, although there's, I mean, there's some great writing, these. I mean, things like, you know, away from, or like Boardwalk Empire and right. stuff like that. They're marvelous. Did you see Fringe at all? That's all right. Fringe? No. Fringe was excellent. Fringe was maybe the best horror sci fi show I've seen in the last two decades. It was very, very good. There's one I did like, and I can't remember what it was called. It was had Jessica Lang in it. Oh, American Horror Story. Yeah, I liked yeah. some of that. That was very good. Yeah. But there's, to be honest, there seems to be a glut of these. TV, uh, you know, monster shows of vampires, or, right. or, and, it, and they basically don't, they're more a series of teenagers of problems. Yes. Yeah. It's, it's like so Beverly Hills 910 <laughs> with, with some vampires. supernatural stuff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. it gets a bit boring, to be honest. Oh, yeah, I mean, some of my favorite uh, sort of creepy, eerie. So movie that came from the No Blade of Grass. <laughs> Did you ever see that movie? Very obscure British what was movie. It's called No Blade of Grass. That and it bell. was based on a book, but basically what happens is the grass all dies and then everything dies because oh, the animals can't eat it and they die. And it's sort of this end of the world movie, but it's very quiet and very unsettling. Sounds interesting. And there's a movie called um, The Final Program, yeah, which is a British that. movie as well. Which is way very, back. Very weird. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that, uh, Were you in that yeah. era of. Uh, uh, where everyone was terrified of the world and of everything, right? right. The Cold War and God knows what else. Yeah, right. some great stuff came out of that era. Right. I mean, all the sci-fi stuff from America was the Cold War. Was yeah. It? Oh, absolutely. It's the best stuff. Yeah, and it's funny because my, my wife is from England, and when I talked to her about kind of growing up in the '80s, where here we were just told that Russia's trying to kill us all the time, and sure. evil. But in the UK, it was like America and Russia are going to kill everybody. Yeah. <laughs> it sort of a, and we're going to get stuck in the middle. Yeah. Well, it, well yeah. It was. Yeah. It was. It was totally different. And you get Weird. things like threads, yeah. which is horrifying. Yeah. And, um, I was going to say, uh, you asked me about new stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah. As I actually quite like to, I, mean, I haven't seen it all yet, is the, uh, the strain. Yes. Because yes. it's quite, i tell you why I like that, is because it's, although some of it, no, I'm not so keen, because they've obviously got it very graphic because it's trying to compete. They have to get but that But I like the way it's an old-fashioned story. Yeah. It yeah. reminds me of The Last Man on Earth, uh, Omega Man. Sort yeah. Of, where it's well, like some, a sci-fi. Sometimes it reminds me of cheesy old things like Blackula, not Blackula, Count Yorga <laughs> Count Yorga, yeah. You know, where the, the coffin comes on the plane yep. and you follow it along. And it reminds me of the, 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 that kind of um, era of, of film. Well, I think Guillermo del Toro is so well versed in yeah, that sort of world. Yeah. And I mean, he, he yeah. loves you know, Night Gallery and all these things that, uh, you know, when, he, when he's involved with something, it's it's definitely coming from a place of someone who knows the yeah. lexicon of it, yeah. which is great. Yeah, I have to. Um, I saw a couple episodes of the stream, but I, I, I need to keep watching it. I think it's good. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I've, I've caught about four of them, and I, I thought, yeah, this is good, you know, and I can. I like it. But, uh, yeah. 
I was very disappointed when Hammer, I had great hopes when they Hammer returned. would come back and return. And I d didn't expect them to be like they were, because you couldn't yeah. be. But I thought that they would come up with a, a style and a kind of in-house thing like Hammer had. Right. So you'd say, well, this is good, you know. Yeah. Have an ensemble cast, maybe. And instead, it's, it's just, you know, I was very disappointed. It was very disjointed, the, yeah. It just, the, woman, the woman in black is terrible. Right, and the Did TV you ever one see the TV version? Yeah, it's excellent. It's fantastic, isn't it? It's yeah. really good. It's like, how could you mess that up if you just remade that the way it was on TV? Yeah. It would have been fantastic. I know. They, 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 uh, there was someone did some rewriting and they put more graphic stuff in. Yeah. It doesn't really add it doesn't, to it. No, it, it absolutely doesn't. And it was sort of sad to it's see. It's like telegraphing the horror to it. It's like, it's like, it's like, like having an uneasy, that uneasy feeling. It's making a movie for 14 year olds because they have money. So it's like. But, it's, but it comes back to what you were saying when children's stuff was scary. Yeah. See, that wasn't, that was made for 14, uh, well, younger than 14. Right. And yet it was far ahead and yeah. much more. I mean, yeah. Right, they weren't sort of writing down to them. They, it was sort of respectful to what scares yeah, them. I hate that dumbing down. I, I always, although I love the movie for because it's just so ridiculous, the Monster Club, the final Amicus movie. Oh, oh yeah. But it's such a sad sort of ending yeah. to Amicus, yeah. and it's almost like a TV movie where they have Woolworths masks on and, and this sort of uh, yeah. portmanteau of just ridiculousness. Yeah. And it's it's but it's almost a perfect end to that because by the time the '80s had come around. It, it's a shame, though, isn't it? Yeah. But I think that you know, there's an irony to that. Is it never happened? But we were asked to do a track for it. Really? Yeah. But I can't remember why it didn't happen. But in the end, it didn't happen. The uh, was it the Pink Fairies or the Pretty Things? The pretty Things pretty did things the Monster Club. Yeah. UB40, the Pretty Things. Yeah. Um, originally, we were supposed to do something for it. Like, that would make sense, actually. That would have been a lot better. Yeah. <laughs> There's some great actors in that too. For the, for the track on the young ones, were you asked to write a video and ask to song? No, they said, uh, will you come on the show? We're doing this, this pro, and they right. told us it was about a vampire. And, oh, okay. and they told us it was about video nasty, so we said, right, let's write a song about it. So we gotcha. quickly wrote the, the song. Right. Yeah, so it would fit in, yeah. Did you write a thing for the Monster Club, and then it just... No, we never got that far. Never got that far. But we had the scripts, and it was... I don't know why it didn't happen now. Because I actually like the book. The original Art Chetwood Hayes book is pretty good. Yeah, Art Chetwood Hayes. That's a name I've known for a long time. Yeah. yeah. If there was a movie that you could have, or a TV show that you could have written yeah. tracks for, is there a movie that you would have liked to have done music for? Oh, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Did you ever watch it and just go, oh, this is being ruined by the music? I could have, I could have done this so much better. <laughs> well, I don't know about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's funny, although, although I don't like, I'm not that keen on, on really gory films. I did like some of those weird uh, films in the 70s, you know, like... Um, well, I love Suspiria. Oh, well, yeah, so I mean, that's brilliant. That's, but that's for a style. And you can watch that without the sound on it. It's yeah. amazing. But I was thinking of... Um, what the hell am I thinking of? Is it the... Um, oh, how is it called? It's in a hotel, and there's that thing that infects everybody. Oh, Shivers. Yeah, Shivers. Uh, it, and, it was, and they those, came from within. And those, those, yeah, all those... The Cronenberg stuff. I like those, you know, yeah. even though they're terrible. Yeah. yeah, but they're very smart. I mean, the idea of them makes sense in the pseudoscience of it. It, it was plausible. quite nice to see Barbara Steele doing something. Oh, yeah. Sometimes still. yeah I loved all those, but the, like the Mario oh, Barber. Yeah, the, yeah. Like, Black the, Sabbath yeah, and Black yeah, Sunday. And the, yeah. yeah, I mean, all, all the Baba stuff's amazing. And, and even now, I mean, I remember when I was growing up, it was almost impossible to get Baba movies. It, like, now, should, now you can get them all. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so easy. Yeah. Which is great. And also kind of like, you're like, you didn't earn this movie. <laughs> you shouldn't be allowed to watch uh, you know, the original cut of Black Sabbath. Yeah, yeah. yeah Bob is great, and, and it's, a, it's a world of, a, it's a conundrum, this world that we have. I think um, Eva Green's kind of fitting in that spot. Yeah, of like the Barbara Steele sort yeah, of haunted of, beauty. Yeah, she's attractive, but kind of oddly attractive. Right, right. She's, she's very, she's yeah. got a strange voice as oh, well. Oh yeah, I thought for a while maybe like Isabel
Belajani would be like that when she was in like possession. And oh yeah, it was very. That was banned for a long time. Yeah, it was. It was that was a video yeah. nasty. Yeah, yeah. And that's I remember such I went to see that with Scala. I think. Oh yeah. It came out. I used to go and see all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, before you know, you could tape everything. Yeah. I used to go to the cinema all the time, and I was because I lived in London. I was always going to the cinema clubs. I was right. members there, and I go to these all night shows. Prince Charles and the Scala. Yeah. Yeah. Prince Charles used to get full of. Um, Stuff, it's warm in there. I, I remember one time I was in an all-night horror show, <laughs> and they came down the aisle spraying <laughs> people. It was just like disinfectant. Yeah, <laughs> it's like delousing the audience. Yeah, it's yeah, it pretty bad. Like That's kind of nice though that they're doing yeah. that. But the, but the scarlet was great. Obviously. Oh yeah, I love the scarlet. I, I met um, uh, Forrest J. Ackerman at Cape, oh. and uh, he gave a, 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 a with um, Ray uh, Harryhausen. Ray Harryhausen, yep. But he went straight into the spiel, you know. This is the ring, the Bela Lugosi war, oh, yeah. and you know. He's on like autopilot. It's just like a, yeah, he's, he's like he's like an automaton just yeah. doing like. But this it was thing. it was nice to me because I mean he, his magazines, you know, they sparked off so many people in oh yeah in business. Yeah. That Monster Kid generation. Yeah. I, don't think, yeah, I don't think there's an equivalent after that. I don't think yeah. there's like one touchstone that it was sort of a perfect storm of all of the Universal movies coming to television. So kids yeah. see them, the famous monster stuff. Yeah. I used to, I used to, I used to, there was a little news agent in this place called Roxmoor I used to go to and I used to sometimes have it and I'd be so happy about it. Oh yeah, because it'd be imported, you would just be like, is it here? Yeah, because American magazines were harder to get back then. Yeah, but you had a lot of, in the 80s you started getting a lot more sort of horror magazines like Shivers and The Dark Side and that sort of stuff, but in the 70s I imagine it was probably pretty difficult in the 60s. Yeah, yeah, um, it was difficult, you know, as I say I had to go to a special place to get, to get that. And what was the other one that came out? Monster World, wasn't yes, it? Yes, Monster yeah. World, yep. Just to get that as well. And of course, they did their special issues. They did an all monster episode. Right. And things like that. Right. Yeah. It's, uh, it's, it's a good thing you did find them at all, because I always wonder, like, what if I hadn't seen that one thing or, or found that one magazine that set me on this path to, to sort of find the things I liked? Also, there, there was something that was very important, I suppose, and got me interested in stuff was um, when I was a very young kid, there was a, you know, things came through the door and there was a little thing, a flyer came through the door saying this chap was going to set up a, a movie club for kids okay. up at the church hall. Finally. And it was in winter, it was pitch black, so it was nice. And I was a member of this club, this junior film club. And what it was is this guy set up this camera and everything, and he would show old Republic serials and okay. bits of dodgy uh, Man jungle the movies yeah, yeah. and stuff, you know, Flash Gordon, Bug Rogers, all right, that right. kind of stuff. So I got to see all that great stuff. Yeah. And it was I sort of have seen on. You didn't see it on TV, and right. it, 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 you didn't see it in the movies. So I got to see because it, it was pretty old by this. And it was sort of inadvertently curated by this guy because yeah. that's like what he got. Yeah. So I, I got to see all this great stuff, you know. That's great. I mean, that's that changes who you are. I think to a degree, it's sort of almost by chance that you sort of discover. I, I miss. I must admit, because I have a very rarely go to cinema now, but I miss that magic of the old theatres. You know, oh yeah. And the lights go down. It has a history there. Beautiful place, and then the light. Yeah. You know, there's a there's a few places. Um, that I know that have been restored. Uh, there was a good one in Brixton that I used to go to, the Ritzy, I think it was. The oh, Ritzy. yeah, yeah. I, I saw vi they had video drum was playing. Yeah. The show, it used to be one, a Muzzle Hill Odeon. Oh, yeah. That yeah. was uh, an old Deco the one that no, was still the one good screen, good job, which is right. nice. And it had this ceiling where it went across like a, a piece of film. Oh, wow. Yeah, really cool. And then it had the two exit signs of the hexagonal Odeon clocks. That's pretty cool. What's the, there, there was this one in North London that was like Egyptian themed. We just, we just, oh, you I like that. It was still around when I, I mean, I was living there about 15 years ago. There was one down in, in, um, uh, yeah. Islington like that, uh, um, near, oh, not Islington, I can't remember the street it was on. But yeah, it was quite a few like that. But it was sort of a, it was a, it was a night out, like it you meant something because you were kind of going yeah, out to you, see you this sort of stuff. There used to be one in North that was got quite famous for a while I used to go to it. The, um, the donors had been there since the 60s, right. but it was very weird. Like I was in there and I was watching this film and then this, um, 
this woman came down for the, oh, for right. the yeah, right. ice cream right. like right. she would have done. Right. Big <laughs> beehive, it was oh, all crooked, and kind of like hair like this, really thick eyelashes, <laughs> fake eyelashes, yeah. heavy yeah. makeup, really badly yeah. applied. Yeah. Obviously, still dressed like she would have been in the right. 60s, right. and she was in the 70s. It's so like post apocalyptic. So she could barely, you know, like, like this. And then there was this boy, was a big relative, right. and he had this plastic sure bag, clear plastic bag, full of sweets and stuff, and he was dragging. It behind him like a hunchback, mm, you know, very and, weird. and you, so it would be great just to go and see that. Like right, in the film. it's a double feature, even though there's only one movie. The atmosphere inside the cinema. Let's read the book. Yeah, I mean, I think everything's so of sort of scrubbed clean and new, and it just. But they don't look like anything anymore. No. Before they, they went over the top because they were they were trying to make them look like have a you know. Right. Although the, uh, back in the um, well, it was the 80s now, so it was new. It's not. I went to a cinema in Australia <laughs> on a day off and I walked in it was just like a shopping complex and went up to the stairs and I went in these doors and it's an amazing the interior was all like a church, like a cathedral, they and they'd used yeah. all ex-church things balls. and made this amazing uh, cinema. It's in Sydney. Well, it's sort of the, the church of the 80s. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? But yeah, I'd, um, yeah, I'm hoping when I get back to uh, New York on this trip, I want to go and see a few places. I wanna, I've never been inside Carnegie. Carnegie Hall? Yeah, yeah. like that. There's a lot of really cool, actually, if you I don't know if you guys are going to Los Angeles on this tour at all, um, but uh, on Broadway in LA, it has still the most still standing Art Deco theaters in the world. Oh yeah, no, and it's just amazing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, just amazing. Yeah. It's funny how um, you know what used to be Grand. You've got the Egyptian theater down there was the one where they used to have all the red right, cars, right, on Hollywood Boulevard, little Park. tiny ones. Yes, yeah, yeah. It's weird, set back isn't it? and very People don't realize that. Don't yeah. Think. Oh yeah, and there's uh, yeah. there's yeah. some amazing. Yeah. These theaters are just being used. As like a like a jumble cell. Yeah. <laughs> it's What's that? Is it the Spantageous? That's the really over the top one. Yes. yes. That one's yeah. incredible. Yeah. And then there's the million dollar cinema, which is right across from the Bradbury building. Yeah. On yeah. Itself. And that, yeah. They still use that for events occasionally. Do they? Yeah. Which is pretty cool to go in there and kind of see everything. It's, yeah. It's a shame because LA's cooled down so much. Yeah. Really beautiful. You kind of have to go to these small. Like I did a show last night in Northampton, Mass, which is three hours west, and it's in the country. And I was in this old theater, and I, they put me in Boris Karloff's old dressing room, and then had a little plaque that just said Boris Karloff's dressing room. And I'm like, they didn't do it on purpose. They were just like, oh yeah, it's just. And it's like you kind of almost have to go to these places where time has stopped a little bit to find these sorts of things. Well, I appreciate you taking the time and all the time of your time. Thank you so much for talking to me. Easy talking about old TV oh, yeah, and film. And there you go. That was Dave Vanian of The Damned. Uh, Two-fifths of The Damned there. Captain Sensible and David Vanian. Uh, amazing time for me. I, I cannot believe that I got to speak with them after watching them do just one of the best times I've ever seen them perform. Really amazing show. Uh, if they come to your town, they're doing some a little tour in the next few months in, in the UK and in the US. Definitely go see them. You, you will be very, very pleased. It was a great show. It was them and, and TSOL and the briefs. And what a great night. I really enjoyed myself. Can't thank them enough for taking the time to speak with me. And for you, uh, please email me at ken at iCanRead.com. Let me know what you think of the show. If there's guests you want me to try to get on the show, I'd be happy to do what I can to bother people. You can also go to our Facebook page and like the show. It's a huge help. You can review the show on iTunes. It's also a huge help. Tell a friend. Uh, you can go to tvguidancecounselor.com and see more information about my guests and all of their sort of social media things. And you can find out where to buy albums if they're musicians or comedians. And just check out some more information about the the show or visit your local library. I, I don't know if that would help, but you could do that. So we will be back on Wednesday with a normal format show, as always, and I will see you then on TV Guidance Counselor. <laughs> Right, thank you very much. Um, terminating the interview. Yeah. <laughs>